Hey there guys, it's me again. I'm back tonight to discuss something that I've been getting asked a lot in my last CCV video. If you haven't watched that one yet, there's lots of great information on that uh, CCV detailed video, so just go back and watch that. This video is going to focus on using the OEM CCV with Boost. How could I forget? That's what I'm known for is my old turbo setup. So I'm going to tell you what happens when you try using the stock OEM CCV setup with a turbo or supercharger and why it will not work. Let's talk about it. Okay, and here's our uh, display from last night when we discussed the CCV system when it comes to non-turbo cars. Now, whenever you boost this engine, let's, let's actually rewind here. These engines, these engines were never designed for forced induction, so the valve cover, the intake manifold, and the CCV were never meant to see positive pressure. So we're going to have a wall. I'm going to put a wall up right here. There's going to be two sides to this wall, okay? So the right is going to be <clears throat> vacuum, which is negative pressure, which is what these engines are normally operated on. Then we come to the left side of the wall, which is positive pressure, which would be boost from a turbo or supercharger, forced induction. Okay, so the CCV valve is designed to operate in one way and one way only. Here's your vacuum supply. So it's from the intake manifold, it is sucking. It is evacuating the crankcase of the vapors in which it creates. So it's, con it's constantly sucking vapor this way. Coming down, it's spinning. Like I described in the last video in the cyclone, it's spinning, getting separated. Still sucking into the engine where it, get, where it gets combusted. So it's constantly flowing in this direction while it's, while it's evacuating and processing vapors. Whenever you boost... A stock CCV, so, okay, so whenever you boost one of these engines, obviously, uh, positive pressure, meaning air, is being forced in versus naturally breathing it in. This engine's operating without turbo. It's operating uh, solely by the vacuum created by the cylinders while it's running. It's, you know, it's creating, it's creating a lot of vacuum when those, when those engines are, when the cylinders are, you know, doing their thing up and down, up and down, up and down. It's creating a constant vacuum source, Okay everything's happy, it's working great. You introduce boost into this thing on an all-stock setup, now we have more air being forced, in the, forced into the intake manifold. That in return is going to force air through your CCV port, which is right there. And obviously, obviously this, this, actually this whole rail is going to become pressurized now with forced air because it's trying to force air into your combustion chamber for increased horsepower, a lot of fun, you know, boost is amazing. Anyway, you're going to be forcing air backward through the CCV. What what's wrong with that? Does will this not regulate? Will this not regulate boost? No, I mean it, it will, but it's not going to work at all because this valve cover, literally, this engine as a whole, only has one port to breathe from. Just because you're you're under boost doesn't mean those vapors that we discussed last time they still have to escape. Okay, they have to go somewhere. Whenever you boost a stock CCV, you're forcing pressurized air backwards. So then we have a, com a combat zone, a war zone, a, you know, war crime happening in here. We have now crankcase vapors, which your engine's producing whenever it runs, no matter what, trying to process through CCV while boost is coming backward. And it's literally, com it's fighting itself. And those vapors will go somewhere. They're going to find a gasket to destroy and just come spewing out. They're going to... Uh, Pretty much, yeah, any, any seal, really, rear main, front main, anything rubber is under severe stress at this point. If you hang it in boost, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably going to break up on you because whenever an engine is choking up, even by the crankcase evacuation, it's still going to run very poorly. You're also going to notice some severe oil consumption from your turbo if you're turbocharged because whenever you boost this, the, the increased pressure in here is also going to put severe pressure on your oil feed line. It's going to just overpressurize because that pressure is going to find anywhere it can. So the discussion comes how you make a stock CCV work with turbo. You really are not when it comes to making this work. It's going to, you're going to try putting a one-way check valve in here where it's going to shut under boost so it can't put it backwards. But then where's your vapor going to go? So you're going to have to add additional ports uh, with, a, with a secondary PCV system. It's very chaotic. It's a mess. Between my groups I'm a part of, the F54 boosted pages, E46 boosted pages, stuff like that, there have been years of experiments uh, between street-driven cars that are turbo or supercharged and also track cars that are boosted, turbocharged or supercharged, okay? So take it from us. You cannot make the system work 
with forced induction because it was never meant to see forced induction. It was never meant to see positive pressure. Now we're going to jump it. We're going to jump in the future from this generation into E90 chassis, which you know 335s. Then we also have the have the F30 335s, 535 E60s. Those cars that came turbo from factory, they have a whole different re-engineered PCV system where one 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 section is going to process the negative side normal operation no boost it's going to be pro it's going to be processing gases and then and it's also going to have a a positive pressure side the boost it's going to shut this system off here and begin using this system to still evacuate the crankcase that's what it all comes down to it's a very simple concept concept no matter what while your engine's running it has to breathe it has to let those gases out in which it's creating if it can't do that it's going to take out seals uh, it's going to find somewhere to go. It's going to leak oil like crazy. It's going to break things. It's going to break things. So you must have adequate adequate uh, crankcase evacuation while you're supercharged or turbo. I have seen supercharged guys running sealed setups because we come into problems with emissions reasons. Then if we go boost and we can't, you know, we can't be venting things atmosphere in a strict emissions area. So then you're kind of forced to find a way to seal up the system. From my experience, from what I've seen from years. Turbo, it it's a very very hard thing, very very hard thing to do successfully. Superchargers, it has been done using parts from uh, a Volkswagen. I think they use a certain kind of PCV valve from a Volkswagen, uh, but they're still not using the stock CCV, as far as I know. They have a whole different system sealed up. Uh, Supercharger is more easy to accommodate a sealed PCV system uh, because you're you're able to control the boost levels more simply by pulling out a you know so simply simply by swapping a pulley. Whereas a turbo, you're seeing a lot of variation in crankcase pressures, a lot of variation. So it's very hard to control those pressures as these components were never made for a turbocharger or supercharger application. But that's what it all comes down to is making sure this engine can still process its vapor and escape somewhere. So I personally, when, I came, when it comes to turbo, my cars get vented to atmosphere, meaning I take a port from the valve cover, uh, no smaller than three quarter, I'll put it to a catch can with a filter on it so it can still breathe through the air because you cannot block that off. You cannot disrupt the flow because, once again, you'll just destroy gaskets all the time. It's not fun. So uh, I'll do that or I'll just simply put the the hose to a vent, a vent of one of the fenders somewhere, dump it to the ground. I know it's not ideal, but you have to, you, you have to do it somehow. Actually, there is one method. There is one method for this. It's not totally sealed. It's still going to the, it's still going to the atmosphere. But Mike Dodge on a circuit car uses what's called an exhaust venturi evacuation system. So he'll have his catch can up. And here in the U.S., we call this the drug bin because you guys in the U.K., you have this spot open. We have this We have this spot open because we're left-hand drive. So Mike Dodge has a catch can up here with the hose leaving the valve cover. The outlet hose plums into his race car exhaust with a venturi fitting. It's a, it's a fitting that goes in the exhaust. It's at a certain degree. Where as your engine's running, uh, exhaust fumes are flying through the exhaust, as we all know, and actually creates vacuum with this fitting. So he uses his exhaust to force vapor out. Makes sense? So I'll explain it, uh, once again, I'll explain it really quick here on fittings, AN fittings. So he, I think he has two fittings up here. They go into his drug bin at, at his catch can. Then the third fitting from the catch can, the outlet, runs to his exhaust with the Venturi fitting. And it's at, a, it's at a very precise angle. So whenever exhaust fumes are being forced out from the engine, it's actually putting vacuum on that hose and it's literally drawing out vapor. It's assisting the crankcase. That is one method that's been proven to work on his circuit car is using an exhaust evacuation system. But for simplicity, for simplicity reasons, you will find nine times out of 10 within all my forums and groups, people just simply vent their crankcase atmosphere when it comes to turbo applications because it is very, very hard to control the crankcase pressure any other way. Any other way, so that's, that's just how it has to be. Uh, even Boris, he has an E30 uh, with 1200, 1,200 plus horsepower, has like three world records. His valve cover simply vents simply vent his atmosphere with a catch can, you know, not even that. I think it just goes somewhere because it's very hard to regulate the pressures with these engines. So that is, I'll, I'll explain it again real quick why you cannot boost the stock CCV. Uh, it is not designed to flow in both directions. It is the it is the only outlet on this engine, which is right here, which the fumes must escape. So whenever you try boosting a stock engine with a stock CCV, keep in mind, everything's going to be pressurized under boost. Positive pressure is going to be expanding like 
It's going to go places it's not supposed to go unless you have, unless you have everything capped off. So boost is going to come through this vacuum rail, through all these lines, backwards through the CCV, while the crankcase is trying to vent through the CCV. Once again, it's going to just fight. It's not going to be able to vent. It's just going to cause a lot of chaos. Uh, so, however, there have been new products released uh, within the last couple of years, including a breather for your oil cap. It is a one-way check valve, so under normal vacuum, it will be shut. And then under boost, it simply opens, allowing this to vent. So then that may benefit some of you guys. Just do some research. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to vent enough. It very well might because it's uh, Vader Solutions makes it. Uh, v Vegas Turbo, I think, whatever the heck they're called. They also make it. It's just a it's an oil cap with a filter breather. And once again, it, under normal vacuum, it's shut. Under boost, it opens because there's like I keep saying, it's a whole different world. You have pause, you have negative and positive pressure. It's a whole different thing. You have to regulate both effectively. But yeah, that oil filter cap with a breather filter might benefit some of you guys. I still don't think it's going to work with a stock CCV. It, it very well might not because it's still going to see some positive pressure. It's still not going to be working it properly. My flash shut off because of low battery. But definitely look into that. You might, you might, I still wouldn't. But if anything, it could be a secondary breather in addition to vent atmosphere because you cannot, it's impossible to have too much, too much, uh, crankcase evacuation you can have you can put like 10 ports in this thing it might look stupid but you can put as many ports as you want if you're venting the atmosphere heck just pull the whole freaking valve cover off let your engine bay soak with oil that that'd be the ultimate breathing treatment there no don't do that please uh but yeah i'm gonna spin the camera around shoot an outro real quick hopefully you guys learned something and i'll see you in, in one moment okay so that's gonna wrap up the whole uh, boost and stock ccb discussion will it work more than likely, will not. However, look into those turbo uh, oil filter caps. I mean, maybe it'll be some benefit to you guys. They're cool products, but hopefully you guys learned something. I always like, I, I rushed to the shop to shoot this because I, like I, I felt like I couldn't get this information out there soon enough. I came flying to the shop. The one got a snack, got in the mindset, and it was a time for a new video. So here it is, the stock CCB and Boost which you guys have been asking my comments like crazy. This is a great discussion. I'm glad you guys asked this. It's going to be great for informa information for future guys who build their uh, E46 and are boosting it and are, and are searching things. Maybe this will come up for them. So you guys may have helped future people. Who knows? It's awesome. That's what the community is all about. All right, so I'm going to head home and start editing this video. So until next time, I'll see you guys later and have yourselves a good one.